West HQ proudly brings you the story of model and actress Laura Dundervik, a story that began in Western Sydney. I'm Laura Dundervik and I'm proud to be from Western Sydney. I think my big break for me would have had to have been Miss Universe Australia. So that was in 2008. Um, I was modelling at the time and studying at uni and also working part-time telemarketing. I think that some of the biggest challenges are, well, I think one of them would have to be the, the ups and the downs of it. Um, you know, that started, I started modelling when I was 16 and, you know, I could go to a casting then and walk in the room and everyone loved me and I'd walk out and feel really good about myself and then go to the next casting and they don't even look at you. Like you've taken all this time you know to get in there you've my mum's driven me in I've got change I've got ready and then I walk in and they don't even look at my book they say thank you and you feel horrible about yourself and I think I learned probably about the age of maybe 20 21 that you know you've got to start sort of having your own self-esteem and knowing who you are and not using other people around you to determine whether you're going to feel good about yourself or not feel good about yourself. I think if I didn't pick that up at a young age, that would be hard in this industry because there's big wins that I'll have some days and then big losses that I'll have other days. Highlight of my career, I've always sort of set goals for myself in a few different areas. So I was really happy when I got my first TV show. So when I was hosting a TV show on my own, that was pretty exciting. Um, and then after that, it was to be in a movie. And so I filmed that last year and I think they would be my two sort of career highlights um, but then there's you know amazing brands that I've worked with modeling wise which have been really exciting um, and then one of my other highlights is a bit lame but I'm a massive twi hard so I'm obsessed with twilight and because of work I've managed to meet like three or four maybe even five of them and um, that was pretty exciting for me. I think there's a lot of successful people that come out of Western Sydney because there were so many things close by that I could do. Like I have played every single sport. So I did lots of sport, I did debating, I did public speaking, I did acting, I did singing, I did dancing, I did everything. And that's all available in that area. I think people from Western Sydney are very, very down to earth um, and very, very accepting. And that's the thing that I loved about sort of growing up there. I mean, you know, we sort of had an opportunity to do everything and see everything. Um, I think a lot of people, because we're around people from everywhere, because of that, it motivates us. So I think, you know, I've seen people doing all sorts of things, people who are from all sorts of countries, and I was like, hey, I want to do all that. And because of that, I think it makes us very, very ambitious. Look, I still stalk the house that I grew up in. Um, <laughs> we drive past that regularly and just have a look, and obviously you see that change and everything. We lived in a cul-de-sac. We lived in Jan Place. Um, number six in the middle there um, across the road from Roberta Street Park and there was me and my two brothers and then we had three Sri Lankan boys that we went to school with and one was each me and my brother's age and we grew up during the time of like the Sandlot kids so we all thought that we were just I don't know, professional athletes. And so every Christmas we would get, say, basketball rings or hockey nets. Um, and we sort of had the cul-de-sac as like, we had like, you know, a hockey, hockey, you know, sets or whatever. And we'd have the park as well. So we'd play all different kinds of sports growing up. We'd do triathlons. We had a pool. So we'd go for a, a run around the park and then we'd go for a bike ride around the park and then a swim in the pool and just do lots of things like that. So a lot of my memories are sort of sport based from there. And I think as well, as I said, we followed Sydney United pretty um, religiously growing up and it was back in the days when every team had a country behind it. So it was Sydney, Croatia, United, Sydney Olympic was, you know, a Greek following, um, Marconi was Italian. And I think when they got um, the Western Sydney Wanderers in, it's got that really sort of multicultural feel behind it and it's got that sort of um, passion behind it that I think soccer was missing before. Um, so I think that um, in that way it's grown a lot and I think having that team there has been really good. My absolute favourite thing about Western Sydney, can it be my memories? Like, I honestly had the best childhood. I remember when we moved from Greystains, my brother, like, we were living in, like, a little one-storey place there that we couldn't all fit in. Um, we were all in a bedroom together and that, and we moved um, to a two-storey house, so you think us kids would be so happy, and my brother bawled his eyes out and said to Mum and Dad, why are you doing this to us? Um, because we loved it so much in Greystains. Look, I think Western Sydney's only going to move onwards and upwards from here. Um, you know, it was just, as I said, my parents are in Dural now and they're just putting that train line through to Castle Hill and I suppose with urban sprawl, the city moves out. So Western Sydney is closer to the city than before. Um, and I think, yeah, like obviously from there, things are only going to get bigger and better. 
Western Sydney has always had confidence. Now it has a beating heart. West HQ. Discover our bold new chapter in the story of Western Sydney at westhq.com.au.